Hi everyone, it's Kristen. Welcome back for another video in our Artist Spotlight series where I have been featuring some of the most talented polymer clay artists all across the country. This one is no different. I'm so excited to introduce to you Crystal Lynn of Crystal Lynn Creations. Check her out on Etsy, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. She's a super talented artist and she really seems to have a knack for the details and really intricate floral designs and even some food and things like that. So definitely go check her shop out. I, I saw, I scrolled through there a few times and definitely saw some things that I favorited for uh, future gifts and things for people that friends and family members. Um, so definitely go do the same, check out her shop, check her out on social media, give her a follow. When I saw her post these earrings in the Facebook group, I was like, oh my goodness, we need a tutorial. So I'm so excited that she agreed to do it. These little chocolate box candies are the most adorable thing. She does a fantastic job of explaining every step of the way. I'm just so excited to share this video with you guys today. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below and let us know if you're gonna be trying out this um, tutorial at home uh, for this val Valentine's season. All right, without further ado, here is Crystal Lynn. Hi everybody, my name is Crystal and today I'm gonna be sharing with you how to make these adorable little Valentine's chocolate boxes. First off, I would like to thank Kristen for this wonderful opportunity. Her YouTube tutorials are some of the very first ones I watched when I first started making clay earrings a few years ago. So you can imagine how excited I am to be here today. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is roll out some red clay. I have this one on about a three on the pasta machine. This is a souffle cherry. And you need a, a large heart cutter and a smaller heart cutter. I'm going to be using a scalped one, but you can use whatever, whatever heart you like. This is going to be for the top of the box. And this one is going to be for the bottom. Uh, this one has a, an imprint in it. That's not necessarily something you have to have. I just, that's just what I'm using. You can use um, any, any heart cutter that you want, as long as you have one that's just a little bit smaller. Um, now I'm going to add uh, the ribbon across the heart. This is just a really thin piece of um, souffle igloo. This is about a quarter inch wide. And I'm just going to lay that diagonally across the heart here. And then I'm going to use the same scalloped cutter to trim off the edges. Okay, now for the center black piece that goes um, on the outside of the candy pieces, I'm going to be using Primo in black. And I'm going to take uh, a bolt with threads. You can use a screw, anything you have that has some threads on it. And I'm just going to roll this across the black clay. Back and forth just a little bit so we get some nice deep grooves in it. And then I'm going to turn it clockwise and do grooves in this direction. And that's going to give us that um, checkered pattern for the little plastic insert inside the candy box. And I'm going to take the smaller heart shape that we were using, and I'm just gonna mark where my heart's gonna be. I don't wanna cut all the way through just yet. And I'm gonna take these little micro cutters. These are the same cutters that I used uh, to make the little chocolate pieces. And I'm just gonna cut out the little holes where I'm going to insert the chocolate pieces later. Try and get as close to the edge of that heart as you can, but not too close. You don't want it to be too thin. And then 
gonna get all of these cut. I'm interrupting this video for one quick minute just to make sure that you know about all the amazing resources that we have for you over in our Etsy shop for polymer clay artists. So the first one is the complete guide to polymer clay earrings. This is a step-by-step -step guide. All the details of the best clays to use, conditioning your clay, baking your clay, literally everything is in this ebook more than we can cover in videos and things like that um, just because there's a ton of it um, a huge resource list with links and that sort of thing so that's over in the Etsy shop another thing is the getting started on Etsy book it's a complete guide to getting started on Etsy so if you're just starting out and you're interested in selling your polymer clay earrings this is a great resource for you to be able to hit the ground running get those items listed and hopefully start making sales Another one is our brand new product photography ebook. This one is huge. If you're selling online, your product photos need to stand out and be bright and beautiful. And sometimes that can be a little bit tricky if you don't have much experience. So this product photography ebook will walk you through the steps of getting fantastic photos with, um, you know, not super expensive equipment and things like that. Just little tricks and things that you can use to get the best photos possible. And lastly, we have polymer clay color recipes. So I have tons of kits over there with a huge variety of colors. I have a fall one that's out now, a Christmas one. Um, we've got pinks, purples, one with just like a wide variety. So those recipes tell you exactly what colors to blend together to make whatever color it is that you're looking for. So that's also a great resource for polymer clay artists. All right, I'm done with a little advertisement in this video. I hope you'll check us out on Etsy. The link will be in the description box down below and we are at etsy.com slash shop slash dashing and dainty. All right, let's get back to the video. Then we'll take that heart and then this time we'll go all the way through. I'm just gonna make sure that we have a little bit of border around all of the pieces so it's not too thin. And then we'll take out all these pieces. Take a little paintbrush and just clean up these little ridges and then place that right in the center. Okay. Now that we have that done, I'm going to show you how I make the drizzle on the chocolate pieces. So for the actual candy pieces, I'm gonna be using um, Primo Raw Sienna and a piece of Saran Wrap over the top. And then with those micro cutters, I'm gonna cut out just a couple to show you guys how to put the chocolate drizzle on the top. I'm just gonna do a few just to give you the idea. So for uh, the liquid clay, I used uh, Kato Poly Clay, liquid clay, and then I chopped up really fine some burnt umber, and I put that into these little film cases that I got off of Amazon. And um, start off with a little bit of liquid clay you can always add more if it's too thick um, but this is kind of the consistency that you want it, it drips a little bit but it's not too too runny so I'm just gonna get a little bit on the end of a toothpick here and I'm gonna drizzle it across the top of the chocolate back and forth like that. And I like to pre-bake these before um, I put them in the box just because they're sticky and 
they stick to your fingers and you can drop them. So it's just easier if you pre-bake them and then add them uh, to this piece later on. So I'm gonna put these in the oven and I will be right back to assemble. Okay, so I've got some finished chocolate pieces here and I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, liquid clay in each of these little holes here. And then just pop the chocolates in. And then, all right, now we can move on to the rows. Uh, for this one, I am using um, Primo Cad Red that I added just a touch of black to to kind of darken it a little bit. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, make these roses, I'm gonna need a balling tool, uh, whatever you call this tool here, I'm not really sure. And I'm gonna be using my X-Acto knife. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by rolling the clay into a tiny little ball. And then I'm gonna roll it between my fingers into kind of a little snake here about three quarters of an inch long. And then I'm gonna flatten it like this. And then I wanna roll it into a little bud just like that. And then I'm gonna take another small ball and I do this in the palm of my hand here so I'm just going to roll a little ball put it in the palm of my hand and then I'm going to take that ball tool and press it kind of into a V at the top and then the rest of it will go straight down and so once I have that kind of shape there I like to squish it a little bit in my palm to give it a little bit of texture and then I'm going to take that petal and I'm going to place it where the, the end of the rosebud, I'm going to start right there and then overlap this petal, wrap it around, and then I'm going to fold it out just a little bit. And then I'm going to continue doing that, wrapping petals around until it's as big as I want it. And then these, these little balls of clay are gonna increase in size just a little bit um, the further out you get, just so your, um, your petals increase in size just a little bit. So we'll get that shape, give it a little texture. And then you always wanna start Overlap where the last one ended and then wrap it around and then kind of give it, you know, fold it out just a little bit. That might be just a little too much. All right, I'm gonna do one more on this side here, and then we'll be done. All right, now I'll fold that out just a little bit. 
And I'm gonna kind of pinch the base here to thin out all that excess clay that's at the bottom. And I'm gonna lay this down. And I'm gonna kind of roll this as I cut all that excess off so we don't distort the shape of the flower too much. Just like that. And then I'm gonna take a tiny bit of Kato. And I'm gonna place that flower just like that. All right, so the only thing left to do now is a few little leaves. I'm gonna be using Spanish olive for this. And I'm just gonna, again, do a tiny little ball. This time I'm gonna do it on the tile here. And I'm just gonna, towards the top of it, apply more pressure to the top than the bottom, just to get kind of a little point. And then pick it up and place it right there under the rose. I'm gonna do that two more times. And then this one's gonna go right on the back side. All right. And the last step is a little bit of mica powder. I like to darken up my rose just a little bit, so I'm gonna just tap in a little bit of mica powder. And we're done. These are gonna go in the oven. And then I will be back to show you how I assemble these. Okay, so I went ahead and pre-drilled the holes in each of these pieces off camera, but you're gonna need three jump rings for this. Each piece is gonna get its own individual jump ring. So we'll go ahead and put these in and close them up. And then for the third jump ring, we're gonna go through this one this way. And then make sure you come through the same side so that they're laying this way. And then the connector is going to go on this way because you want the earrings to hang out towards the outside. And then just lay that on there. And close them up. And there you are. They're all finished. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.